It is time to shed some much-deserved light on those outstanding collections of cinematic showings that had the misfortune of going down in the thick of some of the most disappointing flicks you're ever likely to take in. So I'm Gareth from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 ensemble movie casts who did awesome work in all full movies. Number 10, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. With Indiana Jones set for a hopefully triumphant last hurrah later this year, many fans have chosen to treat the Dial of Destiny as the true follow-up to the iconic Last Crusade that landed on screens back in 1989. And while it's not too difficult to understand why a lot of indie lovers aren't in a rush to celebrate 2008's The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull as a title worthy of sitting alongside the prior three pieces of immortal action joy, to class the entire project as a complete and utter failure is a little bit harsh. The decision to go with interdimensional beings as the film's MacGuffin, and visuals such as the titular whipcracker surviving a nuclear explosion in a fridge, were divisive to say the least. But the shifts put in by everyone from a Harrison Ford who could play a weary Jones in his sleep, to a Kate Blanchett having the time of her life as a villainous, scene-chewing Irina Spalko, are enough of a reason to return to this particularly inconsistent adventure. Throw in Ray Winston, Karen Allen, and the late great John Hurt all delivering the goods, and you have an ensemble performance that likely would have been immortalized for all the right reasons, with a stronger piece of text to work with and less dodgy CGI thrown into the mix. Number 9. Gangster Squad Ruben Fleischer's Gangster Squad doesn't exactly sit alongside the likes of The Godfather as an all-time classic of the genre, but what it does have in common with that legendary piece of filmmaking is an all-star cast. With this collection of A-listers capable of elevating even the most generic and lifeless material to the level of rather entertaining action thriller. Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone once again share the screen and show off their near unrivaled chemistry as lovebirds. Josh Brolin keeps his titular squad together as Sergeant John O'Mara with his trademark gravitas. And the rest of the unit boasts fun turns from the likes of Anthony Mackie, Michael Pena and Robert Patrick too. Around the time of its release, Sean Penn's explosive prosthetic nose-wearing performance as LA mobster Mickey Cohen understandably stole most of the headlines. And there's still a ton of joy to be found in his hammy delivery of material such as Here Comes Santa Claus before unleashing some lead. Gangster Squad won't change your life by any means, but there's enough world-class talent on show here to keep the entire thing from feeling like a complete waste of time. Number 8. Eternals 2021's Eternals felt unquestionably epic, but still couldn't escape being ranked as one of the poorest critical performers the Marvel Universe has thrown onto the big screen to date. Ambitiously trying to juggle a seemingly never-ending collection of new heroic faces to get to grips with, and a grand story spanning thousands of years, Chloe Zhao's introduction to the likes of Cersei, Icarus and the rest of the longtime protectors of Earth definitely wasn't everyone's cup of tea, though it still came equipped with one of the strongest ensemble performances in recent superhero history. Kumail Nanjiani packed on the muscle and effortlessly did much of the comedy heavy lifting as Kingo, alongside his wonderful valet Karun, played by Harish Patel. Gemma Chan anchors the sprawling picture with a commanding performance as Cersei, torn between Richard Madden's Icarus and Kit Harrington's Dane Whitman. What a choice, eh? And Angelina Jolie, Barry Keegan, Brian Tyree Henry, Salma Hayek, Liam McHugh, Lauren Ridloff, and Don Lee all produced some rather captivating moments of magic in what often felt like a 156-minute battle for meaningful screen time. Eternals 2 doesn't look like it'll be happening anytime soon, but hopefully this isn't the last we see of these compelling deviant fighters in the MCU. Number 7. The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings prequel trilogy of Hobbit flicks never really connected with film fans quite like that first monumental trip to the likes of Rivendell, Mordor and beyond. It was not through a lack of trying, mind. On top of pumping out some often mesmerizing visual effects and some other less impressive moments of cartoonish CGI, the series assembled a cast worthy of such an iconic tale. And while Benedict Cumberbatch would later provide one of the finest motion capture performances you'll ever have the joy of getting lost in with Schmaug the Dragon, an unexpected journey in particular showcased a Martin Freeman as Bilbo Baggins, Ian McKellen as Gandalf, and Andy Serkis as Gollum operating on a thrilling level that rivaled the masterful work put in by the rest of the OG Lord of the Rings gang. Typically awesome returns from Christopher Lee, Hugo Weaving and Kate Blanchett were also welcome, but all of the stellar turns in Middle-earth still couldn't keep this first Hobbit outing, and the subsequent sequels from feeling like much-loved butter scraped over too much bread. Number 6. X-Men The Last Stand X-Men The Last Stand definitely got a whole lot wrong back in 2006. 
trying to cram way too many new super beings into the war between humans and mutants, while still attempting to dive deeper into the already established collection of X-Men and Magneto's cure opposing brotherhood. The handling of both the cherished Dark Phoenix comic book storyline and a number of the much-loved figures from the titular group led to a largely underwhelming final stand. But outside of the murdering of Cyclops and Professor Xavier, wasting of the debuting Angel, and failure to really deliver a truly emotional slice of X drama, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, Ian McKellen's Magneto, Kelsey Grammer's first showing as Hank McCoy, and a hugely impressive turn from Famke Janssen as a fully Phoenix Jean Grey, threaten to completely overshadow the blatant missteps elsewhere. When you stuff this many top-class performers into a 104-minute mutant monster, there was always a solid chance of a few super hits among the many misses. And thankfully, these valiant efforts to rise above the mediocrity turned out to be anything but the last stand for the majority of these Marvel icons. Number 5. Suicide Squad What held the potential to be the DCEU's gritty answer to the Guardians of the Galaxy turned into an often painful attempt to infuse that successful MCU flick's lighter energy into what had initially been captured by director David Ayer. The conflicting visions for what the folks creating and funding the picture wanted it to be unfortunately bled into the finished product, leading to a Suicide Squad that ultimately scored a deserved 26% on Rotten Tomatoes. While the overall tale told on screen was one both Warner Brothers and DC fans were quick to erase from their tortured minds though, the stellar work put in by some of the titular anti-heroes still managed to pick up some praise amidst the dreadfulness. Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn went and stole the whole damn show with her chaotic work as the iconic ball of madness. Jared Leto's Joker instantly captivated, but left many wanting far more after the majority of his extremely dedicated work ended up on the cutting room floor. Will Smith's undeniable chemistry is given a few moments to break out of the dullness as Deadshot, and any time Viola Davis gets to unleash her menacing Amanda Waller is guaranteed to be worth a watch. It's just a shame the movie as a whole was not. Number 4. Batman v Superman – Dawn of Justice Before Suicide Squad absolutely stumbled into cinemas, Batman v Superman – Dawn of Justice provided the studio with its first warning of what can happen when you fail to deliver a story worthy of boasting some of the most loved names in the superhero business. Despite bringing Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman all together for the very first time in a blockbuster outing, Zack Snyder's 2016 film largely did not impress with many feeling the colossal flick was little more than a soulless chunk of action designed to set up further franchise offerings rather than deliver a truly satisfying super picture. Even with that often being the case though, it's hard to pin the blame on the outstanding central figures and few supporting stars, tasked with breathing life into Kal-El, Bruce Wayne, Diana Prince and the rest of the ensemble. Away from a Jesse Eisenberg who appeared to forget which DC villain he was playing, Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot all lead the line superbly with Jeremy Irons' Alfred Pennyworth excelling during his few flickers of screen time too. But not even those lights in the darkness could save this dawn of justice from becoming an eventual failure. Number 3. Amsterdam A quick scan through the cast list David O. Russell somehow managed to assemble in the lead-up to his 2022 mystery comedy thriller by the name of Amsterdam seemed to suggest that the fighter and American Hustle director was on to another surefire hit with his next project. Only when this tale of a mysterious murder, three longtime pals reuniting, and a political conspiracy based on the 1933 business plot did finally land on screens last year, the end result wasn't anywhere near as captivating as one would have hoped, especially given the frankly ridiculous amount of talent on show. But it must be said that the central trio of Christian Bale, John David Washington, and Margot Robbie all still proved while they're three of the very best working in the business today, as wartime pals Burt Berenson, Harold Woodman, and Valerie Vose, respectively. Elsewhere, Mike Myers stops by to deliver a few much-needed laughs, Robert De Niro rises above the often confusing material, and all that's without even getting to the other highly engaging turns given by the likes of Rami Malek, Chris Rock, Zoe Saldana, Anya Taylor-Joy, Michael Shannon, Andrea Riseborough, and Timothy Oliphant. So how do you not create absolute movie magic with a cast that star-studded? Asked David O. Russell after watching this deeply underwhelming box office dud. Number 2. Star Wars Episode 9: The Rise of Skywalker What eventually became J.J. Abrams' Episode 9 of the Skywalker Saga left many a disappointed Star Wars fan wishing they'd never bothered investing in the sequel trilogy in the first place. 
Yet even what is classed by some as the worst slice of action the galaxy far, far away has ever produced, still came equipped with a ton of respectable and often impressive showings from the actors behind the various plucky heroes and four sensitive figures seen in The Rise of Skywalker. Adam Driver obviously brought his Kylo Ren slash Ben Solo arc to a rather emotional conclusion, Daisy Ridley continued to grow into the role of the galaxy's last real hope during the fight against her revived Emperor Grandpalps, and Oscar Isaac was on hand to ooze even more charm as Poe Dameron. The returns of Billy D. Williams, Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill and the late Carrie Fisher all provided near-perfect reminders of the joy Star Wars can bring when operating at its absolute best, too. There was definitely a lot to dislike about this feature-length retcon and nostalgia-dependent offering, including the mishandling of characters like Finn and Rose. But the Force was still strong with a number of the stars trying their damnness to end this saga on a high. At least they tried, eh? Number 1. The Great Gatsby Many were quick to dump on Baz Luhrmann's take on The Great Gatsby back in 2013, with critics claiming that the routinely dazzling movie maker was simply the wrong person to handle what some classed as a rather delicate story of the man behind the mask of millionaire Jay Gatsby and the folks orbiting his mysterious self. Gatsby still went on to become Luhrmann's biggest box office hit, and the film landed two Oscars, mind. But the real stars of this show were the talented cast tasked with bringing the likes of Gatsby and co. to life throughout. Leonardo DiCaprio in particular produced a simply hypnotic display as the central figure, perfectly donning the facade of the great man before masterfully revealing his deeper insecurities and relentless need to be reunited with his beloved Daisy Buchanan. Kerry Mulligan more than fits the bill as the vulnerable Daisy, and both Tobey Maguire and Joel Edgerton brilliantly embody the parts of compelling audience surrogate and overbearing husband in Nick Carraway and Tom Buchanan respectively. The always dependable Isla Fisher and Jason Clark also stopped by for a few memorable moments too. Many would be quick to agree that this Gatsby wasn't as great as it could have been, but the turns from Leo and the rest of Baz's terrific ensemble definitely weren't to blame for its eventual disappointing reception. And that's our list of any other ensemble movie cast who did awesome work in all full movies. Then let us know all about them in the comments section right down below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. Also, if you like this kind of thing, then please head on over to whatculture.com and find some more fantastic articles just like the one this video you're watching right this second is based on. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you, as always, for clicking on this lovely video today. I truly hope you're having the best day possible, and hopefully I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye!